Jamin Moore here with another Aftershock special from Vancouver. Thank you to all of our patrons who have helped us be here for this game today. I'm joined by Jack Skane, one of the heroes of the Open Cup victory against the Seattle Sounders. You guys have beat the Sounders two times in just a couple of weeks. They're the CONCACAF champions. That should make you guys now the champions of CONCACAF. Isn't this how it works? I'm pretty sure that's how it should work, at least. <laughs> hey. uh, I wish. You wish. Um, but you had the goal uh, set up by the penalty that was drawn by Benji Kakanovich in that particular game. You were all over the central midfield, but you had mentioned after the last Open Cup game that 90 minutes felt like a lot on your legs. So they just decided to add on some extra time and make you run even more. Were you looking for a sub there? Uh, or did you expect that well, if this goes to overtime, I'm going to have to stay there the whole time? Uh, I, I, I wanted to be in that game. The Since it was a tight game, um, it becomes really competitive. And so you kind of lose any thought about your legs. Um, like the Bay, Bay Cities, the 90 minutes there was really good because it probably allowed me to do that. Yeah. The 120 minutes. But before Bay Cities, it had been a long time um, since I'd played 90. But yeah, I was ready to go 120 for sure. I was. I feel good today. Um, I'm. I'm getting to the. I'm getting there. I'm getting really matched it. I think I was uh, thinking as it was going into overtime, and I was uh, right behind the bench. Um, uh, one of our patrons actually uh, had secured tickets for us to be able to sit right behind the bench in that game, and so we're right on top of the action. It's a really t small environment. You probably can hear every single thing that the fans are saying out there. Um, and I was just looking at it going like, oh, my goodness, these guys have to play Vancouver on Saturday as it's going into extra time. Not only that, it was raining a bit cold for us anyway, standing mm -hmm. standing out there. How did that kind of enclosed environment feel to you? Did it remind you at all of like ACC soccer uh, and uh, maybe some of the crowds there? We had a conversation. Some of us had a conversation about that. It did. It was like a good college game, um, like a smaller stadium, a lot of people, a lot of noise. Um it was a, I like it rained. Yeah, like <laughs> crazy weather, but I loved the environment. It was cool. It was a cool place to play. And those fans are good. I mean, they're loud the whole time, obviously yeah. in Seattle, but um, yeah, it was a cool environment. I really liked it. So you had the free kick against Bay Cities, which we talked about afterwards. Uh, and that that surprised me. And then, you know, in this when this penalty is taken, I don't think I would have thought Jack Skein is stepping up to take that penalty. So you surprised me there again. You keep surprising. Uh, how comfortable are you with the penalties? And was it no doubt that you were going to be taking the penalty in that situation? I had no doubt. Um, I grabbed it. And no one really tried to get it away from me, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I feel really comfortable with penalties. We practiced penalties, obviously, in school all the time. Um, and I still practice them here all the time. I feel comfortable on set pieces, penalties. It's a, it's a good, good place to score a goal. It is. In fact, uh, we had heard... Uh, and and I don't think there's any video of this at all. But in your very first Earthquakes preseason game, you scored a banger. At least that was the way it was described on social media. Um, that was your very first preseason game. Matias Almeida, you're kind of learning him and his system at the time, you know, in the moment. What did it one feel like to score in your very first game like that? And do you think like that helped you uh, with your contract situation with the Earthquakes? For sure. I think that that um, probably gave Matias the idea that I was worth a contract, I think. Um, yeah, we were playing the crew in the first game down there, and we had like a second lineup out there. Um, and Saeed cut into the middle and played it to me. And before the game, Matias had said, like, just play free. Don't worry about it. And so I was like, you know, I'll hit it. So I just hit it, and it went in. Um, about how far was it? Maybe 25 Wow. yards um and after that yeah i mean your confidence is high and the rest of preseason i felt good and um felt like i deserved a contract good that, that's a, that's a good story um going back to the open cup game uh, one of the things that we learned from alex cabello after the game was that jt was helping kind of set up everything in terms of the or the, the the order for the penalties and i'm looking down that lineup and i'm going like this is almost like a murderer's row for penalties. I don't think a lot of people understood, but Tanner Beeson took the penalties for Stanford and never missed one. I think Oscar Agron did the same thing for Clemson and only missed one, he told me. So, like, 
these are really good penalty takers. And I think a lot of surprised a lot of Quakes fans how well you guys uh, took penalties in that. But it was we were noticing that you were not in the first five. So was that a yeah, I already took one this game. I'm going to take a step back and let other people do it. Or were you fighting with JT going like, hey, I've already made one. I can make another one. If they asked me, I would have said I want to be in the first five for sure. Um, but I understood. I had, I had already taken one, which was definitely a psychological factor sure. there. Um, and the first five guys, I mean, they're all really good players, really good penalty takers. And so I was happy that it got to me to eight and I was able to take one. Um, but yeah, if I, if I had the chance to argue it, I would have argued it. That's for sure. <laughs> well, I would have tried to take one. It's a win is a win. Uh, it was probably one of the most exciting Open Cup games I think I've ever seen. And when it comes down to keepers at the very end, it's kind of something special, it's right? It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, what's the longest you'd ever gone before in a shootout match, whether in college, maybe even you were, you came from the Union Academy. Was there ever any time where you had gone past keepers before in a match? No, but we had – no. So that was the longest I had ever been in penalties. <clears throat> My freshman year at UNC, we were in the Final Four against Stanford, against Tanner. Right. Um, and we got to one round before keepers. So we were at like 10. Both teams had taken 10. And we had a guy miss one at the end, and Stanford won it. Um, oh, man. And I told Tanner, we deserve to win the game. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that was the longest I had ever been in one until this past – this past game so while a lot of mls teams feel like they're going away from using the mls draft we were just speaking with uh oscar uh, as well it feels to me like the earthquakes have continually done really well finding really good value out of this draft and and more recently uh got a couple international players out of it and it seems like there's a lot of uh now internationals that are making their way into NCAA that have hopes maybe of playing in MLS or at least of being able to use that as a platform to get back into Europe and into the professional ranks. As you were in uh, the NCAA, you know, at North Carolina and you were a captain of your team, like how did you notice that kind of changing the environment of, of NCAA during that time? Because it seems like it's been over the last three, four, five years. It's been recent. That's for sure. Um, I started to notice it maybe my sophomore or junior year. We brought in a couple freshmen from from Europe, um, and they're good players. And I think that that's part of the thing that these coaches have realized is a lot of these academy kids in America that they were signing, that the top schools were signing at one point, are signing homegrown deals. And so it's tough to find top talent in America in college without them signing these homegrown deals now. And so the next option is, okay, Europeans who didn't sign the deals mm. um, or from wherever internationally who didn't sign the deals. And it's changing the landscape of college soccer. One, because it's allowing other schools to become really competitive. Like a couple of years ago, Marshall was in the national championship game. And there were a bunch of international guys, a really good team. And 10 years ago, you know, you just wouldn't have seen something like that happen. Um, and so it's changing the landscape. It's good for the MLS, I think because it's giving these international guys a look in the MLS. And I think that's part of their plan is, one, get an education, and two, um, the MLS is growing, and they want to they want a chance at the MLS. So you were at North Carolina. Oscar Agron comes in. He's from Clemson. Jeremy Obobese, I believe, was Duke. Uh, you've got several players in from Stanford. It seems like Chris Leach, the focus is on fine players out of Stanford, fine players out of the ACC. What to you was, was a so important about one being in North Carolina, which you know I've known for many for many years, is one of just the top you know soccer schools in the East at all. And then you're in the ACC, a highly competitive conference. Virginia just went to a national championship game and lost with with Daryl DK mm -hmm. uh, a, a couple of years ago. And uh, you guys have been all around that. Oscar Agron just won a national championship. Stanford uh, in Tanner's time had won national championships. So what is it about these schools you think that kind of separates them and prepares them for MLS? Um, it's competitive. Um, and that's in the team. So practices are competitive because you're competing with first spots. And these guys are good. I mean, there are a lot of really, really good college players who oftentimes don't even get a chance um, in the MLS. Um, and on top of that, the, the in-season schedules, 
in my experience in the ACC, it's really, really competitive and it's really tough. Like you said, there's UVA, Duke, Clemson, um, all these schools, and you're playing them twice a week. And there are a lot of pros on these teams. And so it's it's a really good level. And I'm happy that the Quakes are a team that are um, utilizing some of these guys and giving them chances because um, there really are a lot of good players in the, in, in the college league. And it just takes a little bit of time to, to translate that to the MLS. But – um, a lot of good players. So obviously the earthquakes, you know, used a lot of that type of college talent to go out there and beat a team like the Seattle Sounders, you know, the, the champions of CONCACAF. Um, and it's something that, uh, you know, has seems to be working really well as a formula. You're working to get some additional time, I think, into the regular MLS games, you know, an opportunity like the Open Cup with something that because of COVID you didn't have last year. And, the, and, and you're thriving in this particular format, and now you've got a game upcoming against a team in USL, but you're going to have to go back on the road and be able to win at Sac Republic. So more opportunities, I'm sure, coming coming for Jack, Jack Skane. And, uh, you know, tell us kind of, you know, how you feel uh, under the, uh, the change with Alex Cabela so far. Yeah, I, I think it's been a change that um, the team needed. I think it's good for me personally. I think it's good for a group of guys personally. I'm like, I, I love my time with Matias. Um, the staff was awesome. I mean, it would, it would be tough for guys to not like them personally. Like, they're great people. Um, but it just got to a point, I think, that we needed a little bit of change, and this change has been good. We've done well so far. And obviously, Wanda was my teammate for for what, for myself, felt like a long time. But obviously, for guys like Tommy and Jackson and JT, like, teammates for a really long time. So having – he and Raleigh involved is really cool for us um, <clears throat> to have a little bit of, a, of American influence. Guys who are American who've done well in the league. Um, so I'm excited about it. I hope that we continue to do well because I, li- I like them um, being involved a lot. Getting behind uh, Cavello like I was the other night, it was interesting to see kind of how he was really trying to micromanage the positioning of players, particularly to guard, I think, against some of the transition opportunities that can present themselves uh, to the players. You also talked about uh, in the game against Bay Cities how he had you tucking inside uh, a bit more when you were uh, playing at the outside back position. Um, you know, uh, obviously you, you want to be tactically flexible, and that's really important. But, uh, you know, how has uh, the change with Cavello uh, really kind of helped uh, solidify the defensive approach. Um, yeah, it's just it's more it's more structured in general, like you were mentioning. Um, we we focus on it a little bit more in training. We talk about the the defensive side tactically a little bit more, and we are focused on when we give the ball away to get behind the ball, um, and just kind of limit other teams' opportunities, which is, you know, I. A, a good thought. It's it's tough for teams to score when you've got a bunch of guys behind the ball, um, and so I I think that it's it's a good formula for us because I think it's we're we're tough to break down. We've got good athletes and good players, and when we have the ball, we have a lot of quality. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, how are you enjoying the city of Vancouver so far? It's awesome. It's great. I wish it wasn't raining so much, but <laughs> it's it's a great, great just, place. just like Seattle. It's like it's like being at home it's almost all the time. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy. Crazy, crazy weather here. Thank you, fans, for uh, checking out this video. Uh, really happy to have you today. You feel like you're really kind of coming into your own and, and making advantage of these, taking advantage of these opportunities that you're getting. I hope we're going to see you a lot more in uh, MLS games here soon. But if nothing else, you got uh, a big game ag- against uh, uh, Sac Republic coming sure. up here very soon to for prepare sure. for. So I'm glad to hear your match fit and recovered from 120 minutes plus penalties, two penalty goals the other night, three total goals in Open Cup play. Congratulations on that. Congratulations on beating the Sounders and and the best luck today against Vancouver. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for being on. Yep. So fans, remember, uh, like, subscribe, and also uh, check out our Patreon uh, so that uh, you can support more coverage of the San Jose earthquakes like we're able to provide you today. And thank you once again for joining us. I'm Jamin Moore with Jack Skane signing off for the Aftershock.